To promote my new flower shop, I had one place print my business cards, another print my brochures, and a third, my signs. Now my roses aren't red, my violets aren't blue, my geraniums look dead, and I don't know what to do. Staples can help your business stand out with signs, banners, and brochures that are a true reflection of your company. And now at Staples, spend $50 or more on print and marketing services and get $5 off your next in-store purchase. Now my business is blossoming and I'm spending less green. Exclusions apply. In-store only. And 623-18. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, hello, hello. It's another glorious day, my tea sippers, and you know what time it is. I hope you have all of your comfort together because it's time to dish the tea. And you're just tea, darlings. Ah, with big meat.
hello, 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 hello there. My darlings, how are all of you today? Out here in Blog Talk Radio land, here in this wonderful country of the United States and all across the globe. Hello to all of you in Germany and Italy and France and the Caribbean islands and everyone within the sound of my voice. It is another glorious Wednesday, my tea sisters. And you know what time is, and I hope you have all of your couplets together, because, darling, it's time to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darling, <laughs> with a big meat. Well, my darlings, I, I'm sitting up here, I'm a little disgruntled and here and all, because I'm telling you, trying to do this show, um, I always come up against, uh, you know, adversaries and principalities and carrying on that try to get in the way of, of coming on and having me do what it is I need to do. However, uh, because this is only commentary, I, I just want to sit down with you guys for just a few moments and uh, give you what I feel about the Oscars, okay? Um, we've had all of this do what did of what's going on in the world today. Uh, about what what folks are saying about the Oscars and carrying on. And I wanted to weigh in on this because I think some of this stuff, honey, we have gotten a little that way. Uh, folks seem to be like this is brand new. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last couple, this year and last year uh, in particular, we've had, you know, non-blacks or, or in the major categories, you know, we didn't have any representation of persons of color being nominated. So the folks want to be all up in arms about it. And uh, I take issue with that slightly because, though I understand where they're coming from, um, this whole thing about boycotting and carrying on is really, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, and then to set the record straight, you know, everyone wants to put all this on Jada and Spike Lee. You know, but they never said the word boycott. They never said, I want you guys to boycott the Oscars or whatever. All they said was, I'm not attending and I'm not watching, okay? It was Reverend Al Sharpton who called for the boycott last year. He called for the boycott now, you know, and things of that nature, you know, to make a point and a statement of this, that, and the other. And I'm having a problem with that because – uh, it really doesn't make any sense to boycott something that um, really they're, they're in standard protocol, okay? I'm trying to pull up this article that I saw on Facebook, and there was a gentleman who sat down, and basically what he said in his article is that uh, he did, you know, the math and, and this, that, and the other, and he keeps saying that we are under, we're not represented in this, that, and the other, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, what is happening is that he did the math, and according to his numbers, and did his little thing or whatever, um, he decided and and said that um, of all the Oscars that have been given to blacks and been won and whatever, that it represents maybe like 12.5% of African-American community. Well, guess what, darling? Isn't that what we said? The 12.5% of the community is what we are, how we're represented here in the United States. I and mean, we're only that part of the population. So according to his numbers, this is what he says, you know. And I was like, wow, I never thought of it like that, nor did I decide to do the math on it. But here's something that I want everyone to consider. Uh, the Oscars have never been African-American friendly or even persons of color, you know, because as much as we put up a stink about black folks not being um, represented or whatever, what about Latinos and, and Asians and, and Middle Easterners and carrying on who are now having a voice? We have more and more stuff coming out that uh, is representative of their communities as well, but yet, you know, we're not, have, we're not hearing that whole particular stink about them, you know, and carrying on. So, why is it that if it's always becoming a black-white thing when, it, when it's a systematic thing? You know what I'm saying? And I think if we just attack the system and be able to do that uh, on, on, a, on a broader scale, 
I think it will it will um, play out very differently, and then in our favor. Okay, I was watching the view, and Whoopi said something I thought was profound, and that is, perhaps we need more people putting out movies that represent the populace. We need more black movies. We need more Asian movies, or at least those diverse, you know, more movies that are diverse in their casting and carrying on so that we have a plethora to choose from. So it doesn't seem as though somebody is getting is getting shafted or shunned or stumped or whatever the case may be. And I agree with that. You know, we saw the video uh, for those of you who follow the internet and carrying on, you know, Aunt Via, that she's known, the original Aunt Via, Miss Janet Huber, she went off and she wanted to blast um, Jada and Will, for that matter, about what it is that she felt, you know. And everybody's on this kick that it sounds like Jada is saying all this because Will didn't get the nomination. And I'm I'm a little bit bitter about that particular statement because I think that's just too coincidental you know, or, or, or too convenient of a statement. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it wasn't just Will and Karen, it was just Elba and um, what's the child from Seven Years a Slave and there's a couple other children, you know, who who have Oscar-worthy performances. And as far as I was concerned, I saw Creed. And Miss Tessa Thompson in Creed, how they should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actress because that little helper did that in that movie playing Bianca. So, you know, there's a number of things and a number of, of issues that I take with that. Uh, coming That statement coming from Janet, Janet Huber and carrying on, and then she wanted to reference Wheel about something that happened 25 years ago about getting a contract. And then she wanted to say, oh, you know, she made reference, oh, here we go, being bitter again. Yes, bitch, you are. Okay, it sounds as though you don't know how to let shit go because you're referencing something 25 years ago and say, oh, karma this and karma that. When the Entertainment Tonight sit up there, and they had reference wheel back at the Grammys when they boycotted the Grammys because the Grammys would not sit down there and recognize the rap category and stuff on camera. So he ended up boycotting the Grammys that year. And then the following year, they got results and the rap category. They got performers. They were able to be nominated and stuff on camera. And they were able to be a, a part of the collective. But here is my thought. Because everybody keeps talking about diversity of things, and okay, wait a minute, I got to pause. Honey, something just hit me. Um, <laughs> I'm in the studio, honey, sipping on my tea, and I'm watching something very closely, honey. It just hit me that way. I had to take a pause for just a second. Uh huh. Sip on my tea, and then keep on looking. But uh, <laughs> but at the same time, um, here's something to consider. And that is, I say, y'all so busy worried about the Oscars and this, that, and the other. Honey, create another, another category, another, another prestigious award. If we can't get into the Oscars, why not create the Aussies? Uh huh. I said it. The Aussies. And what pray tell are the Aussies? Well, if you are not familiar with Aussie Davis who was born Rayfield Clarence, or the Clayford, Rayfield C. Davis, okay? His name became Ossie because, according to the report that I read, when his mother was going down to fill out the birth certificate, the clerk misheard the name because the mama was saying that the baby's name was R.C. Davis, and so the clerk thought she said Ossie. And that's how he became Ossie Davis, okay, as a performer. And Ossie, along with his wife, Miss Ruby D, are African American or Americans of African descent actors and theaters of royalty. They have done so much in the theater world and cultivating theater arts for for uh, blacks and Americans of African descent. They have created foundations. There's the Ossie Davis Scholarship. Uh, created in his honor. They were social activists and carried on. They were instrumental in making sure they helped with Bayard Rustin and carried on with uh, creating the Mantra Washington for jobs and 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 uh, equality. And everything that he's done, all of his work has been done with integrity. Ossie was one of the ones who fought 
alongside with Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte uh, to make sure that whenever he was cast in a role, he wasn't doing the stereotypical roles because he wanted to do something better. He was on the forefront for that in a time where that was unheard of. Okay, he was above playing the step and fetches and carrying on because he wanted to show a different representation of the community. He became a director and he became a writer. For those of you who don't know, that he wrote the play Pearly Victorious that went on and to get all kinds of critical acclaim. I think it won a couple of Tonys as well. I know it has because Melba Moore won a Tony for Pearly Victorious. And he directed that along with Gordon Parks and Melvin Van Peoples. He was one of the few directors that directed film and movies that was able to hire blacks and other uh, pe- persons of color and carry it on. So if we want to sit down there and create something that, that you want to be our own or that's going to be more inclusive, fuck an Oscar then, okay? Fuck an Oscar. Get an Aussie. Let's build that and make that with the same prestige that the Oscars have and then create that to where it is what the Oscars are not. And if you if you fall to that, then that becomes on you. If you're saying that the Oscars are not diverse enough or whatever, create the Oscars, the, the Aussies, and make the Aussies as diverse as it ought to be that you say the Oscars are not. Create the Aussies and let that be the prestigious award that everybody wants to, you know, to acclaim to, to shoot for. You know what I'm saying? Let that be what you say the Oscars are not. Whoopi said something that I thought was absolutely, I, I did not do the history, but when she said it, it was phenomenal. She said, okay, we all know that Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American to get the Oscar, okay? And, of course, being female, it was 70 years before another African-American woman received an Oscar, and that was Whoopi. Hers was best support. Now, one of the things, too, that I get tired of, with the Oscars and Carrie on, is that oftentimes a movie is not nominated or whatever, or we get folks who end up winning because they are in period pieces, you know, i.e. slave movies or whatever. You know, when Whoopi won hers, you know, she was a, it was a spectacular performance, you know, but she was basically the comic relief of the show. She was in intricate, an intricate part of the show, and her performance was absolutely magnificent. But, again, she was the comic relief. How come she couldn't get it for Clara's heart? Huh? How come she couldn't get it for the color purple? Hmm. How come she couldn't get it for Mississippi Burning? Okay. How come she couldn't get it for Karina Karina? Okay. No, she got it for Ghost. You see what I'm saying? Now, they criticized how they carried on because... Howie got it, and the scene that they showed was with Howie and, and the sex scene, that that sold the movie, okay? Octavia got it by being the sassy maid, okay? Denzel got it. He got two. He got one for the glory. That was the, the supporting actor, but he got lead actor. When he got the lead actor, it wasn't for Hurricane. It wasn't for Malcolm X. It was for fucking training day when he sat there playing what? A rogue cop, you know, badass black man with an attitude. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? Always, 12 Years a Slave, honey. Yes, it was a fantastic movie. It opened up our eyes to a lot that was going on and carrying on, and it gave us a new uh, perspective on what the slave trade was, or whatever, to where a free man was caught and put into slavery. That was a whole new dynamic. But again, it was a fantastic movie. Everybody got all up in arms. Why? Because it was a fucking period piece. Another slave movie. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Monique got hers for what? She sat up here being a sassy, badass mama who didn't care about her damn kids. You see what I'm saying? And that there is an image that I get tired of seeing. Uh, being portrayed or feeling as though that those are the only kinds of roles that are worth uh, nominating because this is what black folks are supposed to be. This is what black life is all about and carrying on. I get tired of that. You see what I'm saying? So we need to look at that and then make sure that we create quality stuff. And I'm not saying that those movies were not of quality. It's just that the Academy and those who sat there and voted for that kind of stuff 
are always deeming that these are the kinds of images that we as a community always have to offer. And that's not necessarily the case, okay? We are broader than that. We are bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? We are much bigger than that. So if you want to sit down there and get into this thing, honey, let's do that then. If you don't want to do the Oscars, I say I say don't boycott the Oscars because, you know, Chris Rock still got to get paid. Chris is still doing his thing. Chris is the one that's sitting up there that's going, and you know he's going to get ready to shut this motherfucker down. Chris is going to get ready to let you have it, okay? Y'all already know. So why not tune in to, to help that brother out? You know what I'm saying? Why would you boycott it? And he's the one sitting up there because you know he's going to go to tell it like it is and give you everything, and he's going to get his life. And the white folks and Karen or whoever don't like it, they ain't going to, you know, if they could sit down there and deal with Ricky Gervais and Karen on and still get him to come back to the Golden Globes and Karen on as, as, as brass and class as his comedy is, Tyler Chris is going to take this to a whole nother level. And y'all know this is his specialty when it comes down to black and white issues. So, honey, my whole thing is don't sit down there and shoot the messenger or whatever. The Oscars have never been fair or whatever over its history. Sit down there and create something new. So that there is my take on it, honey. If you like it, love it, or whatever, I implore, I, uh, implore you to sit down there and message me at, uh, at dishingtea.com or follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. So I will talk to you guys again. Ta-ta. Unstoppable, do the impossible, we the undeniable, royalty indefinable. Ford knows that your vehicle is a reflection of you, so they design beautifully innovative, stylish cars like the Explorer, Escape, and Fusion to make your journey safer, smarter, and more dynamic. Ford, born to roll. Roll on, sister, roll on, roll on. Learn more at IamBornToRoll.com. Roll on.